This video is a warning of the potentially serious side effects of high-dose corticosteroids used to treat multiple sclerosis, and in my opinion, sometimes there's inappropriate use of steroids really without scientific evidence that could lead to major harms. And I'll start with two caveats. One is that this is just my personal opinion, and many people, including experienced MS experts, may disagree, so please talk to your own provider for personalized medical advice. And the second is that I'm not trying to downplay the seriousness of multiple sclerosis. My personal experience is that many people with MS with milder relapses, in other words, people who have a relapse but they don't look that physically impaired, let's say they have just numbness in the legs, they find that to be extremely unpleasant. Maybe it's uncomfortable, they have slight imbalance, or maybe someone with optic neuritis but visual acuity in the affected eye is 2030 or 2040, most people find even those attacks to be quite unpleasant and are willing to receive high-dose corticosteroids to help them recover more quickly. So MS disability, even if mild or moderate, or we perceive it as such, can be quite impairing and most people want aggressive treatment, but I wanna address a few issues. One is I think there's a cognitive bias where if you personally haven't had a side effect from a medication, you perceive it to be safer than it actually is. Now, I've had thousands of patients literally receive high-dose corticosteroids for multiple sclerosis, and over the years, I've seen serious complications. It's hard to even remember them all. I had one patient I remember had a bad urinary tract infection, became septic, and went to the hospital. Another one of my patients was getting monthly IV solumedrol, one gram. This is kind of an old-school treatment, not used as much anymore because we have disease-modifying therapies. It never had any evidence for preventing long-term disability in MS. And this person unfortunately developed a serious complication where they developed something called osteonecrosis of the hip, which is damage to the proximal part of the femur bone due to impaired blood supply. And they actually have permanent arthritis of the hip. And unfortunately, they were doing well with MS. And this complication is by far are worse than any of the symptoms they had from MS itself. And of course, it's very unfortunate considering this treatment really has no evidence and probably did not have any long-term benefit to them whatsoever. I had another patient who had disseminated shingles, a, an infectious rash caused by the varicella zoster virus, the same virus which causes chickenpox. I've had patients develop osteoporosis or bone thinning and fractures. I've even heard of a patient, this is not my personal patient, who developed a bleeding gastric or stomach ulcer leading to death. Now this is rare, but it is possible to die of complications from a single course of high-dose corticosteroids. Now the next concept I want to talk about is the idea of what is the indication for high-dose corticosteroids for MS in the first place? In other words, what does the evidence suggest that they effectively treat? And the answer is a multiple sclerosis attack, or also known as a relapse, flare, or exacerbation. In other words, new neurological symptoms due to focal inflammation in the nervous system. Now, common examples include optic neuritis, which can cause pain and vision loss in one eye, or transverse myelitis, or inflammation of the spine, which could cause numbness or weakness of the limbs, or brainstem attack, which could cause symptoms such as double vision, tremor, imbalance, and vertigo, and many other examples. And this typically develops subacutely over several days or perhaps a few weeks. However, some people with MS can get worse for other reasons. It's common for an external factor such as heat, stress, sleep deprivation, infection, or electrolyte abnormalities to worsen existing symptoms of multiple sclerosis even though no new inflammation in the nervous system is present, and this can mimic a multiple sclerosis relapse. It's known as a multiple sclerosis pseudo-flare or pseudo-exacerbation, and it is more effectively treated by treating the underlying cause. For instance, if a urinary tract infection is causing the pseudo-exacerbation, it could be treated effectively with antibiotics. In fact, clinical trials include a definition of a relapse, including that it must last at least 24 hours, must 
be associated with objective changes on neurological exam and must not be caused by something else, such as the examples I gave before. Now, I'm not suggesting that any physician can objectively know with 100% confidence whether someone is having a true attack and not something else. And of course, it may be totally reasonable to give high-dose corticosteroids if a multiple sclerosis flare is expected or suspected, but not 100% confirm, but sometimes, in my opinion, people go way overboard. Now, the next concept I want to explain through a personal story, and this happened earlier this year when I got sick. I had cough, fever, congestion, you know, a mild upper respiratory tract infection. But a few days later, I got worse, and I started getting short of breath. So I went to urgent care and they took a chest x-ray and I had pneumonia. You know, I had a focal consolidation in one of my lungs. It looked like a bacterial pneumonia. So I was prescribed antibiotics. But a few days later, I got even worse. I was more short of breath. And so I drove myself to the emergency room. And I remember walking from the parking lot into the emergency room, standing in line, waiting to be checked in. And I was really short of breath. And I was thinking to myself, this is not good at all. But I saw the ER doctor, they did another chest x-ray, and my pneumonia looked a little bit worse. It had progressed a bit. And typically in this situation, antibiotic failure, they admit you to the hospital and give you IV antibiotics, maybe at least for one or two days, just to make sure that you're getting better before sending you home. But the ER doctor came in and said to me, you're just too healthy. Your vital signs are normal, all your labs are normal, you look a little bit better, I think it's okay to go home. And so he prescribed me a different antibiotic, and he also gave me a steroid and a breathing treatment while I was in the emergency room. I went to the pharmacy to pick up my medications, my antibiotics, and I was prescribed prednisone 50 milligrams daily for four days. Now keep in mind the equivalent dose of one gram of solumedrol typically used to treat multiple sclerosis flares is the equivalent of 1250 milligrams of prednisone. And by the way, oral steroids work well and I prescribe them frequently for multiple sclerosis. In other words, I was given one twenty-fifth of the dose of steroids that I used to treat multiple sclerosis flares. And I was in the hospital for quite a long time. I remember standing in the pharmacy. I decided I was going to get lunch at the hospital cafeteria. And then I ate lunch very slowly. I, walk, I went home. I walked to my car. I drove home. And then I relaxed at home. And within a few hours of that, I felt incredible. I was literally in the backyard doing baseball drills with my kids. I felt great. I felt energetic. All the soreness in my body went away. My fever was gone. And this is just a side effect of steroids. Steroids can increase your energy, can decrease inflammation throughout your body. Obviously, my pneumonia wasn't cured in two hours. And many people without multiple sclerosis experience this. One of my friends used to do hiking a lot and got poison ivy. And he loved getting prednisone because, you know, you could go lift weights and you don't get sore afterwards. He just felt great. Now, this isn't everyone. Some people hate the effects of steroids. They get insomnia. They're irritable. They feel terrible. They even refuse steroids, even if it's clearly medically indicated for a multiple sclerosis flares. But the point is, a lot of people get positive side effects from steroids due to increased energy and reduction of systemic inflammation. But this is just a side effect. It has nothing to do with the treatment of multiple sclerosis sclerosis flares, and unfortunately, it's superficial. The benefit usually goes away within a few weeks. So what am I actually complaining about? Well, we're getting better at treating MS overall. More people are on higher efficacy disease modifying therapies, and less people are having relapses, and hence less people need steroids. And we're doing objectively better. In my institution, we actually have published evidence that the rate of hospitalization in people with multiple sclerosis has 
has reduced. In the past, we were using a lot of plasmapheresis, which is a backup treatment for severe relapses if steroids don't work, and we're using that treatment a lot less. So we should be giving fewer and fewer courses of steroids. However, there are some examples, in my opinion, of inappropriate use of steroids. For instance, I had a patient who was blindly given high-dose steroids without being seen or examined, and they actually ended up getting hospitalized for a severe urinary tract infection that was caused by the steroids because they already had a urinary tract infection, which was worsened and was in fact the cause of the worsening MS symptoms. It's well known that urinary tract infections can temporarily worsen symptoms of MS and MS pseudo exacerbation. As I explained previously, this is different from the case that I mentioned previously. I have another patient who unfortunately has progressive MS. She is on a high efficacy treatment, but it's not working perfectly. There is some progression over time and she's extremely frustrated with this understandably so. And she's gone to the hospital multiple times and is prescribed high-dose corticosteroids every time. And of course, there's temporary improvement, but then it goes away and she's looking for more steroids a few weeks later. And I explained to her, these really aren't relapses. It would be very rare for an older person with progressive MS to have such frequent attacks despite high-dose corticosteroids and despite a completely stable MRI scan. This is unfortunately progressive MS. There are some other options, even including some clinical trials. Giving frequent high-dose corticosteroids, in my opinion, is not the answer and will inevitably lead to some kind of serious harm eventually. The most prominent example of this phenomenon I can remember recently is actually a patient with a different disease called neuromyelitis optica. This is a different autoimmune disease of the central nervous system that can cause optic neuritis and transverse myelitis. And flares of this disease are also treated with high-dose corticosteroids. So this is an elderly individual above age 70 already taking a, an immunosuppressant known to be highly effective in this disease. Now, this is a patient I had not actually seen. I was only evaluating by phone and video because they live quite far away and due to some disabilities, it's hard for them to physically get to appointments, which of course, I understand. And this person was telling me they were having a flare and they wanted me to prescribe high dose corticosteroids to be ordered by home health to be given by nurses. Now looking through the medical records, this person has had numerous courses of high dose corticosteroids all of which were given without being evaluated, without ruling out infection, without examining the patient. And this is quite risky in an elderly person already taking an immunosuppressant medication known to cause serious infections. And I explained to them, I said, listen, you're really not supposed to be having flares and this is really not something that I can do by video over the phone. I would strongly advise you to go to the hospital, which she did, and she was actually septic. She had a serious systemic infection, and that was causing her worsening neurological symptoms. She was actually not having a neuromyelitis optica flare, and luckily she was treated successfully and recovered. And it could have gone much worse if she were blindly treated with an unnecessary immunosuppressant. And obviously, I'm not some kind of genius for figuring that out. Evaluate the patient, evaluate from infection, prior to giving a treatment, know that you're doing the right thing. Now, I'll end with a few more caveats. One is there may be some situations where it is reasonable for a doctor to prescribe a treatment even as deleterious as high-dose corticosteroids. For instance, let's say I have a patient who had a relapse. I evaluated them. The symptoms were very mild. They declined steroids, but now they're getting worse. They call me telling me they're worse requesting steroids. It's reasonable for me to prescribe them. Or maybe I didn't personally evaluate them, but they were seen by a another physician, even if it's an ER doctor that may not have as much experience with MS, if the symptoms in history seem to be consistent with an MS relapse and they were evaluated by someone, 
it could be prescribed by a doctor other than the physician who evaluated the patient. Or maybe someone had a recent MRI and they have active or new lesions that correspond with their symptoms and maybe some other alternatives like someone who's highly reliable, has medical knowledge, can accurately assess that they're having a relapse, that kind of thing. I'm not saying steroids could never be blindly prescribed, just saying that it can be risky particularly in someone who's not supposed to have a relapse. That's something I feel that an emergency medicine doctor doesn't necessarily understand, that some people with MS are much, much more likely to have relapses than others. Like a 20-year-old person not taking disease-modifying therapy is perhaps 50 times more likely to have a flare than a 60-year-old person on a highly effective disease-modifying therapy. That's just something that's not widely known about the disease outside of the neurology and multiple sclerosis community. The second caveat I want to make is that I'm not trying to downplay the symptomatic benefits of high-dose corticosteroids even if they don't come from successful treatment of a multiple sclerosis flare. What I experienced receiving steroids for pneumonia was very real and profound. It dramatically increased my quality of life. And when I told the story of the person receiving monthly IV solumedrol who developed osteonecrosis of the hip, there are many others that had no side effects and felt that the treatment helped them and significantly improved their quality of life. My personal opinion, long-term, considering the risks of benefits, it's not worth it to do it because there simply is no evidence that it will change the long-term outcome of disability and MS. That's just my personal opinion. So to summarize, one, even mild multiple sclerosis relapses are bad and most people want aggressive treatment for them. Two, steroids can sometimes cause an improvement in symptoms even if someone with MS is not having a flare and that can be very confusing. And three, in my personal opinion, sometimes steroids are inappropriately prescribed and they do have potentially serious side effects. For whether or not someone has had prior serious side effects with corticosteroids doesn't make them immune to having a future serious side effect. Unfortunately, that risk is incurred every time someone gets a treatment of high-dose corticosteroids. But I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Have you ever received steroids for a relapse or for something that maybe wasn't really a relapse? Did it help you? Have you received monthly solumedrol or monthly high-dose oral prednisone? Did that benefit you and did it lead to any kind of side effects? And let me know if you have ideas for other videos.